Have you ever had that experience where you don't seem to be putting in any effort to control how you're playing, but everything just turns out brilliantly? By the end of this video, you'll know how to set up your thinking so that your playing comes out naturally and freely, rather than forced and restricted. My students tell me that when they work on this, they get into the zone more often, and they often end up playing things they hadn't realized they were capable of. Now, it can feel hard to strike the right balance between thinking too much and not thinking enough. And if you're not careful, you can end up in that state where you're thinking about how you're thinking. Oh, am I doing too much thinking, too little thinking? And that's really unhelpful. If you're in the habit of overthinking things, then just let me know by leaving a comment below. So, what exactly are you aiming for? Well, the ideal state is when you're actually doing as little thinking as possible when you're playing. You see, your subconscious is capable of processing much more information than your conscious mind, which is what you use when you're very carefully controlling what you're playing. So, not only can it do more stuff and more complicated things when it's just run automatically from your subconscious, but they also tend to come out much freer and more natural, smooth movements rather than kind of jerky, forced, controlled ones. So, if at all possible, you want to be using that subconscious automatic actions to do all your playing. So, where though does that fit with the idea that we can just not think enough sometimes and get into kind of mindless, brain dead, just playing away without taking due care. Well, the key to this is that you need to have some sort of plan that your subconscious is following. So you need to have thought in advance and planned out in advance what it is that you want to do and how you want to do it. And when you've done that, then you're in a state where your subconscious can take over and just do the playing, and you're not thinking. In that case, you are just letting all the technical movements take place because you've drilled them enough in the practice room that you know your fingers, your lips, whatever, just know what to do to create the right sounds. And you're also not thinking hard about what do I want to do creatively with um, the dynamics, with the choice of notes if I'm improvising so much. Because again, you've done all that thinking previously, you've made a plan, you've committed this is what I'm trying to do, and then you just get out of the way and essentially let the subconscious get on with it. Does this mean you're totally zoned out and out of the room and just not paying any attention? No, because that is where you can get into that mindless playing again. You want to be observing, but not judging. So it's almost perhaps like you're outside yourself watching what's going on. You're just focusing on where your attention needs to be for all that feedback in real time, which is going to help all that subconscious skill that you've got there carry out the processes which are now automatic. But it needs that feedback. It's, um, it's not purely about leaving your subconscious to do something and then I'm off, I'm out of here, not even in the room. You're watching, you're calmly focused, you're not straining to do things, but you're there engaged and just helping the subconscious to do its job. Now this may well not come easy to you. If you are not used to this, first of all, it can be quite a scary idea getting out the way, letting things just happen without me being in control. But also, even if you're jumping at the idea thinking, wow, that's brilliant, I'd love to do that. If you've never done it before, it can take quite a lot of practice. So you need to just get used to doing this. Have a safe environment, try it at home. Do not just try this out on a big performance first time up, but have a plan for what you're going to do. Have an idea for what you're going to do. Commit to doing it and then trust that your body, your subconscious will carry it out. 
And like I say, you may well not be very successful at this at first, but keep at it, keep trying, and you will find that you improve. The other thing to say here is that there is a lovely bonus when you do this. In order to take this approach, you have to have a plan in the first place. And that means you have to have done the thinking. You have to have got clear on what do I want to do with this piece of music? What am I trying to achieve with it? And that, strangely enough, sadly enough, is something that a lot of musicians don't always have. They will sit there and essentially the aim is nothing more than to play the right notes. And that's okay, that's a starting point, but it's not going to get you to the really highest levels that you can achieve. So when you are trying to work on this so that you're not thinking so much in performance, the way to do it requires you to get clear on what you're looking for beforehand. So it's a nice added bonus of taking this route. Now, if you'd like to know more about what it takes to burn skills really deep into your subconscious, then check out my video on the four stages of learning next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Please click below to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And while you're down there, why not hit the share button to pass this video on to other musicians? Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.